What's up y'all, it's Brandon from Ice Gaming, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a very quick tutorial on gravity drives and how to put together a very simple but completely functional gravity drive ship. So, uh, I guess let's, uh, let's start out with what a gravity drive is. So, if I can uh, stop correctly, there we go. Alright, so, this is a basic gravity drive. Uh, all it is is a gravity generator and an artificial mass block. Gravity generators act on uh, player suits, uh, or I should say engineer suits, but they also act on artificial mass blocks. So if the gravity generator is connected to the same grid that the artificial mass block is in, and the artificial mass block is turned on and there's power going to this, the gravity generator will act on the artificial mass block creating an acceleration directly in line with the gravity generator itself. Not the center of mass. Now this is actually uh, something important that I need to point out. Uh, if the center of mass is anywhere but directly in line with the gravity generator, or uh, in the case of, let's say I did something like so, where you have two, but they're acting equally on opposite sides of the center of mass, um, then what you're going to get is uh, rotation. So uh, I can quickly demonstrate that over here with uh, this otherwise fully functioning gravity ship by grabbing a couple reactors, placing them on top, and then uh, going and hop in. So uh, if you look from the side, and I try to go up, you can see that it sort of uh, tilts a little bit. Same with going down. Now, uh, as for why you might be interested in gravity drive, well, I mean, uh, just 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 check out the speeds and how fast I'm getting to them on in the bottom left hand corner. Um, I do have this set to uh, very little dampening because this is a very light ship. I found that the heavier the ship I use, the um, easier it is to use uh, the gravity drive, the more stable it is. But uh, for a small ship like this, you can make it relatively stable, uh, especially if I take off this extra masses and the center of mass reverts back to pretty close to the center of the ship. Um, so uh, let's, let's go over how to quickly build uh, this particular ship and I'll go over the settings that I used on Gravity Drive Manager. So uh, first of all, let's start off with a singular block and then hit M to turn on every single symmetry because I want this to be mirrored up completely. Uh, and then double click N to get out of there. Then I'm going to add two more blocks and I believe I go one, two more. Then I'm going to grab my artificial mass blocks and I'm going to build a ring around the outside. Um, then, uh, nope, keep the artificial mass block. I'm going to put two uh, artificial mass blocks facing forward like so, and then two facing backward like so, uh, but on opposite axes. So, Next up, I need gravity generators, and having all the symmetry on makes it super quick to place these. So just like that, I have my up and down sideways thrust, and because these are balanced out along the center of mass, this is a perfectly balanced gravity ship so far. And I'm going to do the same thing with the forward and reverse thrust right here. Now, um, the only thing I have left to add is power, but... Uh, <laughs> So funny story, as soon as I add power, um, all of these gravity uh, generators are going to turn on and start acting on these artificial mass blocks. In theory, this shouldn't go anywhere, but we're dealing with such a small ship in terms of mass, and so much thrust that I would just feel a lot more comfortable if I went in here, grabbed all my artificial mass blocks, and turned them off. Um, now, to set up for the script, just to make this a little bit easier for me later on, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these and put them in a group that I'm going to call Gravity Drive, uh, just so that I can show off another function of the script that I'm going to be using. So, 
Next, I need a uh, programmable block, which I'm going to place n uh, asymmetrically, just behind the center mass, right here. And I'm going to need a control seat right here. Uh, from a bit of testing, I'm going to balance this out like so. Uh, believe it or not, this is in fact perfectly balanced. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to explain exactly why that is the case right now, but it is. So then we grab some batteries, and this one I'm going to turn on symmetry for. And since all my artificial mass blocks are off, it is okay to power the ship. So now it's just a whole bunch of gravity acting, um, and it's all actually canceling each, uh, canceling uh, the other gravity generators out. So pretty much this is just a bit of a lag fest locally because of all the things uh, acting and canceling each other out. But uh, to prevent any kind of loss of power, I'm going to add a couple reactors to this, and then so that we can turn the ship, I'm going to add some gyroscopes. There are, as I found, two different uh, gravity drive scripts that are, they, they allow the gravity drives to act as gyroscopes, but they require you to build the ship in a very specific way uh, for either of them. And what I found is that that kind of limits the uh, general size of the ship. In other words, it has to be a lot bigger to accommodate all these gravity drives. Um, and I also found it limits the design. Uh, one of them basically requires it to be uh, pretty much a square because it's got uh, four nodules or four nodes on the four corners, and the other almost requires it to be a triangle because it looks for three corners. And I also found that they're not necessarily reliable. So Gravity Drive Manager, simple as it is, just add a couple gyroscopes and everything's fine. Uh, the other thing, however, is you're going to want some thrusters. I know it, I know it seems uh, kind of odd that, you know, we're building a gravity ship. Why do we want thrusters on here um, as well as the other, as well as the gravity stuff we're doing? Well, the reason we want thrusters is because we have uh, gravity drives on here. Gravity drives are not stable below a certain speed threshold. They're great for acceleration. They're great for... Uh, getting to your top speed super quickly, um, but they're not great at very precise, slow movements below a certain speed. So I want thrusters to be able to um, uh, take care of deceleration when it's below that speed. Now, uh, hopping into uh, the pro well, actually, uh, let me show you something real fast. So the center of mass on the ship is perfectly balanced right in the middle. Uh, if it was, as I showed you before, uh, anything else, you could actually see it by hitting tab and then going to info and then selecting show center of mass. Uh, as, long as, as long as that little uh, marker there is pretty close to the center, then you can usually just add like maybe an armor block here or an interior block there to balance it out. Uh, wherever you need it to go. So now that's done. Uh, let's go ahead and hop in here and set up the programmable block. So let's go to edit, browse scripts, gravity drive manager, copy to editor. And this is gravity drive manager version 5 that I'm using. Um, and I need to change a couple of the settings here to make it a little bit more stable. So these settings are pretty decent for large ships, but uh, this number right here, um, it's it's going to actually cause oscillations uh, just because it's so low. So what I found is that by setting it at 10, uh, sometimes 20, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try 15 for this. Um, it's, it will actually, um, it, it will actually stop the oscillations that I would otherwise see. Up here, uh, as I said, I'm going to, uh, show off another feature of this. Normally it wants gravity, it wants the group to be called G drive. I'm going to call it gravity drive. 
uh, just so that you can use your own naming convention with this because um, I noticed that uh, the ship I downloaded from the workshop that uses this that I kind of learned a little bit of it from kept the original uh, G drive name and that doesn't really work well if you have a ship that you might dock to another ship so uh, and you know then you have multiple gravity drives all with the same uh, name it, it it's it's just a bit of a mess if, if that happens so let's go ahead and uh, check code compilation successful cool hit okay and uh, the last thing I need to do is grab my gravity drive group there we go grab my control seat hit save and the script is running and controlling my gravity drive so let's go ahead and get some distance Woo! and uh, here's the test I run can I see it uh, twisting up and down when I hit spacebar nope doesn't mean it's not but I can't see it so good enough same thing when I hit C also good enough Let's get a little below that so I don't hit it. Uh, now let's go left and right. Same thing. Seems to be perfectly stable those directions. Forward and backward. Which I believe would be best seen like so. Perfectly stable those directions. Awesome. And I'm not getting any oscillations which is actually really amazing. So now we have a ridiculously fast ship that we can twist and fly around just like any other ship uh, without having to uh, worry too much about um, oscillations or uh, twisting. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is I wish I had marked the location of that other ship because we just went kind of far away from it really quickly and I can't see where it is so I'm going to have to go through admin tools and delete it later. But uh, that is a basic gravity ship uh, you can actually copy the design of these gravity modules over to your own ship. I specifically designed them with a hole through the middle so that you can pass a conveyor through should you choose to. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's, that's all there really is to it. It's not a particularly uh, complicated concept. Uh, the, only, the only thing to uh, worry about or I should say, the only thing to keep in mind with this is that the heavier the block is, if you're not planning on mirroring it, the closer to the center of mass it needs to be. So uh, that's based on center of mass calculations, which sparing the math is basi basically weights heavier blocks further away from the center of mass much more heavily than light blocks close to center of mass. So, like, if I drop uh, another block right there, um, it, it's, not, it's not going to register the difference between uh, the mass of this block here and the programmable block. It's not going to measure, uh, and the, uh, the control seat and this other block over here, it's not going to really notice those because they're very close to it. Uh, but it would notice if I did something asymmetrical like put a reactor on the outside like all the way over here so I mean it's it's not it's not shown right now so let me just add a couple like so and as you can see it's moved however it's if I uh, go ahead and delete these and the center of mass resets basically back to the center it's not going to notice as much if I just put one like right there. So, uh, heavy blocks close to the center of mass need to be mirrored. Well, don't necessarily need to be mirrored quite as much, but if you place them further away, they need to be perfectly mirrored. That is the only limiting factor in terms of design that I found this thing, and I found that that's actually not a bad limiting factor because it's resulted in some pretty cool designs that I've had to come up with uh, in order to utilize this. Editor Brandon here. Uh, so I completely forgot to mention that uh, gravity drives do not actually work in uh, gravity higher than half a G. 
and they decrease in effectiveness very quickly as you approach Hapagee. So they they work okay-ish um, on moons. Uh, actually, they work pretty well on moons, but they will not work on planets at all. So just adding that very quickly, back to the video. So uh, that's, that's just about everything I can think of uh, with regards to putting together a gravity drive ship. So, uh, go forth, create, and, uh, have some fun. And with that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you liked the video and want to see more chill gaming content like it, uh, including my Let's Play in Scum and, uh, my Let's Build series in Space Engineers, you can hit those subscribe and notification buttons down below. Also, if you want to support the channel, please be sure to leave a like. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see y'all later.